a really interesting question because if you talk about Asia generally, the government and the opposition, you know, basically every politician in Canberra will say, yes, we're very focused on Asia. But usually what they actually mean is Asia is China. So you hear a lot of talk about China and I've often wondered why uh, politicians and policymakers in Canberra don't spend more time looking at a country like India, which should be a little bit more natural for us to link into given it's a democracy. Uh, of course, we have a colonial uh, link there. We're part of uh, the Commonwealth there. So I find it really, really intriguing that India gets maybe 10% of the mentions and China gets maybe 80 and, and the rest of Asia gets maybe uh, the other 10 when we're talking about Asia. I don't think India gets enough focus at all from both the media or the politicians. Yeah, firstly, um, it was a bit of a surprise. I hadn't heard about the dialogue. It's only in its second year. And uh, they emailed me asking if I'd like to be a part of it and uh, had a quick look online at what they'd done before and it seemed like a really interesting, dynamic, um, vibrant convers conversation to have to link young Australians with young Indians and um, immediately said yes and I haven't been disappointed. In fact, I've had all my expectations exceeded on day one already. So it's been a, a really positive experience. Yeah, I think there are two approaches, top down and bottom up, and I think both have to happen uh, simultaneously. They'll both feed off each other, and then you'll get a kind of trickle up and a trickle down effect. And I think as more Indians move to Australia and start their own communities and uh, integrate into the wider community as well and, and have some political muscle or some social muscle, that's going to be a really positive thing that will naturally let those connections occur. But I don't think that they're occurring at, at, at a rate everyone would like. And I think personally our two economies need at this stage. Contextuality is often what's missing. So we do hear about, you know, the Delhi rape case obviously uh, cuts through treatment of women. Uh, those broader themes cut through. But what's often missing is an understanding, and I think this is uh, another shortcoming of what we've done in Australia, is we've missed an education on Indian history. We've missed out on kind of an understanding growing up as a child through our curriculum or, or our schooling system about what's created India and why it's this hybrid country that it is. So I think often when we hear things from India, uh, we will hear a difference in society, perhaps looking at it in a, in a more backward sense that we think India is backward. Uh, or looking at some things like corruption or economic problems in India. And we often miss uh, part of the broader picture of just how interesting India is, how dynamic India is, and what's actually causing India to be the way it is. And I think that's probably the greatest difference that I've found uh, having read about India and, and briefly, not too closely reported on, on Australia-India relations or anything like that, and then actually having visited it. Not at all. Not at all. I mean, look at our parliament. Our parliament is predominantly white. Um, there's probably more males than females in parliament. Uh, until we see, I think, a parliament that reflects what you would see in George Street, Sydney, or um, walking down to Federation Square, Melbourne, on, on any typical lunch hour, I think that our country is never going to be fully equipped to have those really cross-cultural links. And that's probably the biggest takeout I've learnt from this, is that there are some very uh, lovely esoteric statements and platitudes made, but actually deep, broad understandings and connections and lasting friendships between two countries, I think those, those things are missing.